Hello and welcome back. I just finished topping off this 2022 Kia EV6 in the GT line trim so we could head out on the highway and do the inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test. But first, don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EV's YouTube channel. We're out on the highway cruising along. It's a steady 70 miles an hour. So let's talk a little bit about the EV6 and also what we do to set up the cars when we do these range tests. Now with the EV6, there's a few different versions that have different EPA range ratings. There's a rear wheel drive version that has a small battery pack. It's a 58 kilowatt hour battery pack. And that has an EPA range rating of 232 miles. Then there's a larger battery pack. It's 77.4 kilowatt hour that this vehicle has here. But there's also a rear wheel drive version and an all wheel drive version. The rear wheel drive version has the longest EPA range rating. It's 310 miles. I have the EV6 GT line all wheel drive. And this version has a EPA range rating of 274 miles per charge. However, this also has 20 inch optional wheels and Kia doesn't break out the different EPA range ratings for different size tire and wheels. Some manufacturers do. All of the EPA range ratings for the EV6 are based on the 19 inch wheels. So while this does have an EPA range rating on the Monroney sticker of 274 miles per charge, with these larger 20 inch wheels, I would expect that to cut maybe 10 or 15 miles off of the EPA range. So, um, you know, the, the combined EPA range rating, to be fair for this vehicle, should be somewhere around 265 miles, although we don't have that certified. Um, I'm not sure if this is a launch edition EV6, because you know the launch edition came with the 20 inch wheels or if this is just an all wheel drive GT line and then Kia put the 20 inch wheels on it. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what the difference is, what other things you get, but this does have the 20 inch wheels and 265 miles should be about a fair combined EPA range rating. Kia and uh, the EPA didn't break out the city and highway EPA range ratings as sometimes the manufacturers in the EPA does. So we don't have an EPA highway range rating goal for this vehicle. So we're going to use the combined it's two, uh, rating of 265 miles. See how close we get. Sometimes we even beat that. Okay, so now let's talk about what we do to set up the cars for these range tests so it's fair to all the cars. Uh, before we start the range test, I will check the tire pressure and set it to manufacturer suggested tire pressure. We go to the DC fast charge station, fully charge it up to 100%. I like to uh, charge it from at least 50% to 100%, so it warms up the battery uh, a little bit and gives us a better opportunity to get the most out of the battery. The temperature shouldn't be too much of a problem here today. When we started, it was 66 degrees. It's gonna get up into the mid 70s, maybe even low 80s today. So pretty good range temperature. Uh, we'll reset the trip meter, of course, before we start going. I set the car in Eco Pro or Eco Driving Mode, whatever that manufacturer calls it. Sometimes it's range mode, sometimes efficient. Uh, the Kia calls it Eco Mode, so we have an Eco Mode. And I always set the climate control to somewhere between 68 and 70 degrees and on fan setting one. I set this on 68 degrees right now. If uh, that proves that I don't need that. I might bump it up to 70 as the range test goes on, which I often do, but I always keep it between 68 and 70 degrees and on fan setting one. We check the speedometer to GPS with our GPS apps. And in the case with the EV6, it was off by one mile an hour. So I actually have the cruise control now set at 71 miles an hour because that seems to be a true 70 miles an hour. Uh, with the regenerative braking, I usually set that to uh, the, if there's an auto speed, which the EV6 has, it's an auto recuperation mode. Uh, that seems to work the best on these highway range tests. And uh, quite honestly, the regenerative braking doesn't matter that much when we do these range tests because 
we're not slowing down often. I only really slow down when I turn around because we do these long loops on the range tests. That way to help F offset any change in elevation. There's not a lot of elevation change here on the New Jersey Turnpike where I do these, but there's some. So uh, we always do loops. So we start and finish at the same location or very close to the same location. And also to offset any possible wind that's going on that day. I check my wind apps. We have about five to six mile an hour wind today. So there's some wind out there. It's not too bad. We're going to monitor that during the range test and see if it gets better or worse. But uh, five to six miles an hour isn't that bad of a, of a wind. Once it starts getting up close to 10 miles an hour, it, it, it will definitely have an effect on the range test. But if it stays where it is at today, I don't think we're going to have a problem. We'll check back in when we're at 75% state of charge, see where we're at. Checking in at 75% state of charge, we have driven one quarter of the range test. And in that quarter, we've covered 66 miles. Pretty much what I expected. We have an average consumption rate of 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour, and that equates to 18.8 kilowatt hour for every 100 kilometers driven. And I said that it's pretty much what I expected because if you multiply that out 66 miles times four, you get 264 miles. And when we talked earlier about the EPA range rating, mentioned that this car doesn't have a range rating for the 20 inch wheel combo that we have. I guesstimated that the EPA range rating would be 265. So right into what we would expect. However, with these range tests, we don't always get the final result that we expect. And a lot can happen in the final three quarters of the test. So uh, checking in on the wind, uh, we're at uh, three to four miles an hour now. So the wind really is not a problem so far. We warmed up a little bit. We're at 73 degrees. So temperature is pretty good. There's not a lot of wind. This is a good day for a range test. So we should get a fairly representative result on what people would expect in these similar conditions if they were to drive the EV6 with the larger battery, all-wheel drive version, and 20-inch wheels in about this type of climate and road conditions. We always talk about how the topography and climate has such an effect on uh, the range of electric vehicles. So you can't just take the results of this and say, oh, that's how far the EV6 goes at 70 miles an hour. Temperature and topography have a huge impact. All right, well, we'll be checking in at 50%. We'll see how far we've gone at the halfway point. Well, we're halfway home at 50% state of charge. We have now covered 129 miles didn't do quite as good as in the first quarter. We covered 63 miles in that quarter, only three less than the first. That's pretty close, practically negligible. The consumption rate is holding steady at 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour, which is 18.8 uh, uh, kilowatt hour per 100 kilometer. So the consumption is rock steady. Matter of fact, it was at 3.4 mile per kilowatt hour very early on, just for a few miles, and then it dropped to 3.3, and it's held that the whole time. So pretty pretty sure that's where we're going to end up at. It hasn't changed at all. Typically during these range tests, the consumption rate will jump up and down a little bit. I'll see 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, but this has just been 3.3 solid the whole time. Uh, another thing I want to point out is, uh, you know, the EV6 is a cool looking car and uh, drives really well also. But in this, that last leg of the range test, I had two different cars pull up the side of me here and just check out the car and kind of speed up a little bit, then slow down so they could get different angles. And um, one of them was a, a white Tesla Model Y Performance. And the guy was just oogling this car for like, five minutes and then he gave me a big thumbs up and drove off which is which is pretty cool um so yeah you know people are definitely interested in the looks of this for sure and uh you know i i get a lot of press cars and um all my friends always check them out so uh i'd like to ask them about this compared to the ionic 5 because they're kind of cousins these two vehicles they have similar powertrains and everything i personally like the ionic 5 i like how the ev6 looks but uh, something about the Ionic 5, uh, that 80s retro look, the pixels, that just ticks that box for me. I love it. Uh, but most of my friends prefer this 
over the Ionic 5 uh, styling wise. They obviously don't get an opportunity to drive it. When we get these media loans, we're not allowed to let anybody drive them uh, except for ourselves, not even my wife. So, um, and we stick to those rules. Um, but in any event, uh, so we're uh, 129 miles halfway home. That's good. That would bring us somewhere around 260 uh, at the end. Uh, seems like we're going to be able to reach that goal unless things change dramatically because of the, you know, I keep an eye on that consumption rate when I do these range tests and that really tells me where we're going to end up at and with a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack if we continue on here with uh, locked in at 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour we should end up right around 260 so uh, we'll check back and we're at 25 percent state of charge and talk about where we're at at that point all right at 25 percent state of charge three quarters of the range test is complete and we are at 188 miles driven. So in each quarter of the range test, we are going less and less and less. In that quarter, we only went 59 miles. 66 miles from 100 to 75%, 63 miles from 75% to 50%, now 59 miles from 50% to 25%. So, you know, I'm thinking maybe 55 miles for the next quarter. Forget about the 260 miles that I was hoping when we first uh, started driving and it looked like we were gonna be able to get in somewhere around what, 260, 265. Now I'm thinking 240, 245 is more realistic. But again, things change. The, the state of charge indicators on electric vehicles aren't perfectly precise. We don't know if Kia is holding a bunch of battery as a low end buffer because we'll drive beyond zero until the vehicle really isn't responsive anymore and I can't maintain a high speed. Uh, and sometimes you eke out another five or six miles after the state of charge hit zero. So we'll know pretty soon because our next check-in is gonna be when we are at the Electrify America charging station where we started and the battery is completely drained. The last thing I want to touch base on with the EV6 is the ADAS system. I really appreciated the ADAS system in this drive. The lane centering, the um, adaptive cruise control works really good in this car and it doesn't nag you constantly if you just momentarily take your hands off the steering wheel or if you're not gripping it tightly so we can feel that you're there. Some of the EVs or some cars constantly nag you and put out a warning like grab the steering wheel or you have to shake the steering wheel. It's not really the case with the EV6. It kind of lets you go as long as every now and then you grab hold of it or you tug on it to let you know that you're there. It's not a hands-free system. You do have to hold the steering wheel, but it works really well. All right, see you at Electrify America when the battery is drained. All right, well, that's a wrap. We ended up driving 57 miles in that final quarter from 25% down to zero, and we ended up with a total miles driven of 245 miles in the inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test. Our consumption rate remained the same, 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour. And again, this vehicle has a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. That's the total usable capacity. I know we pretty much drained it down to nothing because we went into turtle mode and the vehicle really was not responsive at the end and it wouldn't maintain a high speed. So this pretty much had it. I think we drained at least 77 of those kilowatt hour out of there. And who knows? I mean, the vehicle does have a few thousand miles. It might've been DC fast charged a lot. It already may have lost a kilowatt hour or a half a kilowatt hour. So we might not even have the full 77 to use, but in any event, I used everything that was available and 245 miles is the final result. Listen, if you like what we're doing here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel, please don't forget to click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. You can also follow us on social media, Twitter, and all that good stuff so you don't miss any Inside EVs, electric vehicle news, charging tests, range tests, all that good stuff that we do here. And thanks for watching.